This conference will. All right, Father, in the name of Father, in the name Correct. of Jesus, we just. You ready? Okay, ready. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God, for another Bible study. Lord, we come before your table to eat of your word, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord, as it enters our spirits, Lord God. It just don't sit there, Lord God. It brings to pass the things that it said it will do, Lord, because we know no word from you is void of power. Father, we thank you, Lord. We also dump all our cares and concerns upon you. And in return, Lord, we take upon your peace and your grace and your love and all the fruits of the Spirit that's that lives big within us in Jesus' name. So, Father, we just give you the glory, give you the praise for this Bible study and the illumination that we're about to receive from you, from the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. That prayer was so good. I was imagining myself in a spiritual jacuzzi. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Hey, dump it on the Lord. The Lord said take it to him. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. That's what he prayed for. He said, we give it all to you, Lord God, and thank you for your peace. And That was beautiful. Praise the Lord. Well, mm-hmm. uh, welcome to Micromana with Reverend Essie and friends. And today is the 13th of April, 2011. And I just wanted to let you know that we're going to be studying from Luke chapter 21. And we'll we'll start with uh, we're going to start with verse 19 and go to verse 38. And so if you have your swords with you, go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 21. Okay. Amen. God is good. We heard somebody. Who else came on? Somebody else came on. It's me, Nicole. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Blessed. Amen. Amen. Okay, who, how many, who all, who all's reading tonight with us? I'm one. I can read. Two, three. I can read. This That's is Judy. Judy, two. Anybody else? I'll be three. We have a four. No four. Okay, three. Cool, three. Let me see. Um, I'll start with, I'll do 19, 20, and 21. Okay. Okay, in your patience possess ye your souls, and when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. And it says, then, excuse me, then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter oh, there and too. Amen. Okay. Um, what we're going to be studying tonight is the, the destruction of Jerusalem is being foretold here by Jesus. So we know that something is going to happen to Jerusalem. I, I really want to get this right, and I really, really, really want to hear from the Lord tonight between all of us. I know God uses everybody that I know is on this Bible study right now. The Lord uses. I've seen him. I've heard him. I know he dwells within. So I want to hear what God has to say about this because we are living in the last times. Mm-hmm. And everybody, you know, some people say that when the armies surround Jerusalem, Jesus will come back, and before Jerusalem has a chance to go through anything. Jesus will defend Jerusalem. I've heard that. And then I heard also that um, Jerusalem's going to get totally tore up, you know, through the wars and everything. And then Jesus, I want to hear what's really, really going to happen here. We're going to find out tonight. Let's, let's, let's pray God, God's Holy Spirit shows us exactly what to look forward to because as far as I'm concerned, we are here. Mm-hmm. This is what we're studying tonight. We're living it right now. So let's see. Okay, verse 19 says... In your patience, possess ye your souls. So God is letting us know. I I just want to start at verse 19. God is letting us know that we are, in other words, you are going to need endurance. If you can't, I know you've heard heard it before. It says if you can't keep up with the footmen, how are you going to keep up with the horses? And this Mm -hmm. is God's warning to us, right? He's telling us that something real, something is getting ready to go on. If you can't take the little minor things that are happening to you in your homes right now, You'll never be able to take what is about to come. So he's telling us if you have patience and endurance, 
you, your soul will be saved. You, you, it will save your soul. You won't, you won't sin. You just have to, uh, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Mm-hmm. And um, ver- verse 20 says, and when ye shall see Jerusalem, okay, this is what's happening right now. It's happening now. Folks. Mm-hmm. This, this is going on right now. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. It's near. So right now, I know all of you have watched the news. We're sitting here grabbing our chairs and watching the news, and, and we're saying, here we go. But it's like mm-hmm. being on a ride. Here we go. A roller coaster. And and I've been watching the news, and from what I've been seeing, I mean, anybody else can correct me if I'm wrong or add to it if you want, but I, I've been seeing all the countries seem like they're getting mad at Israel. Mm-hmm. I can I, I can see that, that people are getting angry at Israel, and these countries are literally taking up on each other's sides to go against Israel. You could see it happening, and it's and God and Jesus is telling us right there: when you see that happening, when you see people compassed about with their, their armies around Israel, He said the desolation is near. That means there's going to be all kinds of calamities, mm-hmm. and then we're talking about people hasting to escape. This is what I like in verse 21. I heard, which, which we're seeing is true here in verse 21, there are mountains in Judea where the Israelites can go into them, but nobody else can get into them. Mm. Now, I don't know, did anybody else hear that? Mm-hmm. I never heard that before. <laughs> yeah, I can't think of the name of the mountains, but it's true. There are some mountains there that God made for them. And as we see here in verse 21, it says, Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Whoever is in those mountains, there are some mountains right now being occupied by someone that God meant for the Israelites to run into. And then it says, And let not them that are in the countries enter in there into. There are some mountains where nobody else is going to be able to go in these mountains but God's people. Mm-hmm. So I guess I don't know. I can't think of the name of them. I did hear the name of the mountains, but I my memory can only my my megabytes are only so big, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that we know. So that's when they say when they say run to the mountains, run, folks. Mm-hmm. I'm done. Twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. Um. Let me see. Judy, you want to do 22, 23, and 24? Okay. For this is the time of punishment in fulfillment of all that has been written. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. There will be a great distress in the land and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Okay. And what do you think that's saying? I don't know about anybody else, but I'm getting like two different times here. Is anybody else getting that? Two different times? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the then and now kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Judy. However you feel. I I see that they're talking about Jerusalem's destruction, I, I you know the fall of Jerusalem in the in the old times, but comparing it to now is what's happening there now. Um, the people falling by sword, and you know with Libya and Egypt and all these countries that are fighting all the time and mm-hmm. trying to destroy their leaders, and Jerusalem is going to get trampled in it you know, until the times of the Gentiles are, until the time of the Gentiles is up, is there, is fulfilled. So God has made, his, you know, his presence known. Okay, can I ask you a question? Do you think that, um, whatever, whoever wants to answer this, do you think that it's happening now about the Gentiles' times being fulfilled. Do you think that's going on now where they're telling the Gentiles to get out of the country? Hmm. I'm not sure about that one. I think partially. You know, I'm thinking of what was happening in Egypt with with you know, telling the 
the Americans to get out of there because they were fighting and trying to get their leader out. You know, I have a friend over there. She's still there, and she was told to leave, and she said she wouldn't leave. And now she can't leave until June, and they were telling the Christians, they were telling the Americans to get out. Mm. And I remember I, I, that. Yeah, I, I see it partially now where, you know, the Gentiles are are being told to remove themselves from these areas. Do you remember hearing about that older lady? She was from Minnesota or Mississippi or something, and she lived in a, a high apartment somewhere, and um, she couldn't get out of there. Was that Egypt? That was Egypt. Yeah, that was it. There's people saying, there's, they're telling, I feel like this is telling us it's time to go. Mm. The war is being threatened, prophecies against Jerusalem. In the, full, in the fullness of time. Mm-hmm. Anybody else want to say anything? The reason that they're trying to get rid of all these leaders over there is they want the leaders that are there, that have been there for years, out so that this Muslim regime can get in there and take over. And the Brotherhood, the Muslim, I think they're calling it. Yeah, yeah. They want to take over these countries. They want to take over Libya and Egypt. Uh, that's why they're they're fighting to get their leaders out of there. And, 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 I, and I noticed those are the ones that are going against Israel, too. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Brother Aaron, you want to do 25, 26, and 27? Yeah. Um, let's see. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with per- perplexity and sea and the and I mean the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, mm. and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Wow. Jesus. And we can all, we can all testify to seeing signs in the sun and in the moon and in in the stars and uh the especially the the uh the distress of nations mm-hmm. um with with perplexity and the and the sea and the waves roaring well, well okay I, I here's my perspective on it because my, I, I talked to my wife about it. She's on the phone. Hey, dear. Um, I talk to, we, we talk about current events a lot and how they match up. They line up with the Bible. Like today, we took a walk, and we walked past our uh, federal courthouse here in town. Now, the federal courthouse has etchings in the building that nobody pays attention to. Nobody pays attention to it at all. Uh, one of the etchings is uh, what's called... Uh, Fashion Mo or something like that, where it's just a bunch of bands um, banded together by a, a strap, and then it holds a blade at the top. And a lot of uh, fascist countries or, or, or totalitarian countries where there's a dictator um, hold on to fascism, and this has become the um, this has become the uh, the symbol of fascism. This little this little thing, this little concoction a bunch of cords wrapped up with a blade on top. And that's on our um, federal courthouse. Mm. So I'm thinking, <laughs> why is that on our federal um, courthouse? Isn't our country supposed to be a democracy with what the people want? And, that, and, and to totalitarianism or fascism is just the opposite. And so uh, my wife said, well, I've never seen that before. And I said, well, I'm going to show you a picture of somewhere I've seen that before. And I showed her the Lincoln Memorial. And she said, yeah, I've seen that before. And I said, but look at the chair right under his arms. He said, wow, that was those little fashion things right under there on the chair. I said, yeah, that's on the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah, it's on the Lincoln Memorial. And it used to be on the back of a dime. They changed the back of a dime so much. But before there was a torch on the back of a dime, I don't know what's on the back of a dime now, but uh, it was that little hatchet thing on the back of a dime. 
So that, that tells you that there's an underlying corruption with a surface of democracy on top. Now, you know, a lot of people say a lot of people say that, um, and I'm a, I'm a, and I'm gonna get to the scripture in a minute, but I just need to give my perspective. A lot of people say, well, that's un-American to do that. Well, I mean, here, here's why I say this because, and I'm I'm gonna share this story, and I'm gonna be quick about it. I don't know if you guys heard about it. Like about ten years ago, somebody says some planes went into a building. You heard heard that story? Well, I was uh, at the Pentagon on that day, and uh, I was in a, I was in a traffic jam, and they said a seven fifty seven hit the Pentagon. I was right there at the time of that they said it was supposed to be. I didn't see a plane. And there was no plane. And they, they said it was a 757, and I'm going to get back to the scriptures in a minute, a 757 uh, that crashed into the Pentagon. Now, the Pentagon is not that high of a building. It's not that high of a building. So I think I would have heard and saw a plane that large coming down to the ground long mm-hmm. before impact. So here we are 10 years later, and this lie is still perpetual. It's, people are still saying that a plane hit the Pentagon, and I was right there. I was like, Jesus, did I miss something? I couldn't have because I'm in a, I'm in a traffic jam, and I didn't see no plane. Well, he's crazy. Well, listen, call me whatever you want, but I did not see no plane. I saw an explosion at the building. Yeah, that was definitely an explosion, but didn't no plane hit that thing. So Jesus said here, there should be signs mm-hmm. in the sun and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations. Mm. Now, now Jesus is setting up some stuff here where, uh, like you said, Reverend Everson, there's a parallel of times here. Jesus is talking about an actual event that's going to happen to actual Jerusalem, but he's also Mm. talking about spiritual Jerusalem. See, Jerusalem are the people who believe, you know, figuratively speaking. That would be a, crafted in. Yes. And then Gentiles are people who don't believe. You know, so uh when when they um when 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 you start seeing a lot of the stuff similar to this going on, Jesus is saying, uh, people are gonna be so scared. And here here's my here's my interpretation of uh verse six twenty six. Men's hearts fell in them for fear. People are going to be so scared, they're going to be having heart attacks. Heart attacks because of fear. Now, 9-11 was definitely a, you know, spooky event. But for 10 years, I've been scratching my head saying, well, wait a minute now. I, I, I don't know if I can't be... Well, if, there, if I saw a plane, then it would be easier to be afraid. But I didn't see a plane, so now I'm more curious than scared. I said, well, wait a minute now. Somebody's lying here. Somebody's lying. So when Jesus said the stress of the, on the earth, he's like, now look, when you see this stuff happening, just know you that much closer to verse 27, and there you shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now here's another little thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop after this. My wife will tell you, this boy will keep going. You can Google this thing, and it's called H-A-A-R-P, HARP. I don't know what it really Uh, stands for. I made a video on it. You did? I think that's what happened to our church. Really? Somebody sent me. I'm saying this while we have um, witnesses. we got three people on here right now that can tell you. Somebody sent me a, a postcard, and it said, you're going down like the Titanic. Whenever we had our church down here in Houston, mm-hmm. PA, and and uh, uh, Lexi and, and Nicole probably tell you, I don't know if she was there then or not, but and and about a month, I think it was about a month or, or two later, not long later, Houston had such a bad Houston, Pennsylvania, the little teeny Houston. We had such a bad flood. It was one was in November, I think that was back here, and I forget the name of the the that they you know give them names and stuff. And we had a bad one in November, flooded our church out so bad. They said that Houston hasn't flooded like that since, I think, the 1800s or something, or early 1900s. 
Mm-hmm. And it flooded it so bad, we lost the church. And then we thought that maybe we'd have a chance a couple months later before we had a chance to get the church clean because our church was so small. We didn't have the funds or the people to, to you know, put it back to, together again, you know. And mm-hmm. and then again, uh, that was in November. And then turn around in, what was it, next January? Remember, they were like months apart. We got another flood. And everything that was downstairs in the basement of the church, you know, where we used to have our dinners and stuff, it all floated to the top of the church. We were done. Mm-hmm. We were done. And that's how we lost our church. You guys remember that? Yes. And I, I got a card, and it says, you're going down like the Titanic. No. Wow. Last I heard, Satan don't type. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I, I'm not trying to be a conspirator or whatever they call a conspiracy person, but something's wrong with that picture. And, and yeah. a couple months later, we lost our church. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. And then, mm-hmm. you know, everybody, we, we went through, you know, our, our little, the people that we had in our church, we really uh, went through, it was shocked us, it hurt us bad. I mean, to this day, when we meet one another, we had a few people in the church, about all together, we have about 30, you know, if they all come, mm-hmm. you know, little churches are, they all come one time, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. when we meet each other, we're like, I love you and I miss you. I really miss, her. They, everybody says, I miss new birth. Boy, reminiscing, when are you going to get another church? And and I see how it affected us as a as a spiritual family. It really, it really hurt us. It hurt us bad. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. You can get it about the heart. I just wanted to tell you that. I think that was heart. Yeah. And see, for those who don't know, that is uh, a series of antennas aimed at, based on their website. They say that they can scan the uh, inside of the earth to look for buried, um, you know, um, weapons of mass destruction and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, but when, if you aim it into the ground, it's supposed to take the, the rate, whatever they send in the ground, it's supposed to take a picture and you can see whatever people's hiding in the ground. But when you send it up in the sky... It bounces off of something up there, maybe the ozone layer, and comes down, and it uh, and cause earthquakes, cause natural disasters. Mm-hmm. Now, now, see, the Bible says that in the last days there should be there should be earthquakes in diverse places, but notice it didn't say God was doing it. I, 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 if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, it didn't say God will do it. Right, and then. And then these earthquakes causing these tsunamis, that's flooding areas. Now, God said he would never flood the land again. He would never uh-huh. flood the land again. Oh, now, that's something to think about. Yeah, he said he wouldn't do it. So, now here's God, here's Jesus telling us again, when you start seeing stuff in the sun and in the moon and the stress on the earth and then with per- complexity, what, is, what does perplexity mean? Uh, complicated. You can't figure it out. Yes, and you know the image I got in my head is somebody scratching their head, like, "How in the world did that happen?" Mm-hmm. It's Perfect. not supposed to, but it does. Yes. How in the world? Why? Why did that happen? Why would Japan have an er- two earthquakes back to back? Um, why Japan? And uh, why would? Uh, uh, Hurricane Katrina be so big. You know, and I'm not trying to be. I'm, I'm okay. I'm gonna cut it off right here. I, I promise. I'm not trying to inject fear. I'm just saying Jesus said here that this stuff is gonna happen. Now, if you're feeling a little rocky, you need to go back to up to verse 19, where it says, "In your patience, mm-hmm. possess you your soul, your soul, so you will not be a victim." Of verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear. Terror. Oh, yes, exactly. Okay, I don't know if I made sense in any of that, but I'm going to stop right here. <laughs> yeah, that was good. I wanted to piggyback on you, but it was so good. I forgot. I should have wrote it down while you were talking, but it's it's very true. There's things happening. Like you said, this doesn't say God's going to do it. And, and mm-hmm. uh, one thing, one thing I did want to mention. I don't know if anybody here has ever seen it. I don't mean to sound, you know, out there like uh, just crazy. But has anybody ever looked up in the sky and saw a miniature teeny rainbow behind a cloud? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh yeah. What is that? Does anybody have any idea what that could be? <laughs> it's not. It's not a daytime star, right? A day star. What is that? Does anybody know? I don't know. 
Mm-hmm. We have no, I've never seen, I've just been seeing it in the last maybe 10, 10, 10 or 15 years or so. I don't know. It could be heart. We don't know. We mm-hmm. don't know. But, but keep your eyes open. And like I was yeah. saying, for some reason, since we began verse 19 on 19 to 27, I, I'm seeing like two times. I'm seeing when it did happen to Jerusalem, you know, to mm-hmm. Israel, and I'm seeing when it's going to happen again. This is like a mm-hmm. dual time while, while reading this, you know. Yes, yes. And, and I was. I also wanted to, uh, to piggyback off you, verse 26, where it says men's hearts failing them for fear. Has anybody ever noticed that one of the major things that's happening to people nowadays are people are having heart attacks cutting grass, mm-hmm. shoveling mm-hmm. snow? You know, they're, 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 people People are afraid. I mean, it's, it's getting to the point where people, are, their hearts are getting weaker and weaker. It, it's just something. All right, um, mm-hmm. where are we on 20? And then uh, number 27 is awesome. Jesus is coming back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and now look for the cloud. I've been seeing people printing online where they're talking about, we're looking for that cloud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Amen. Love, look, look for the cloud, folks. Christ has exalted his glory, yeah. his, his Shekinah yeah. glory cloud. is going. You'll, you'll believe me, everybody is going to see it on the top, the bottom, and on the sides of the earth. They're going to see Jesus. He's going to come back where everybody's going to be able to see him. Mhm. Amen. Okay. Um, who who wants to do twenty eight, twenty nine, and thirty? Somebody new came on. You want to say who you are or no? Okay. Uh, somebody want to do twenty eight, twenty nine, and thirty? Okay. Anybody want to? Okay. Okay. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift your lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable, look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even, oh, that was 30. That's it, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. He's, he's okay. telling us time is coming. The time is drawing near. Behold the fig tree. Behold Why do you think he brought up the parable of the fig tree? Because when you, uh, you know, when the fig tree starts to grow figs, you know that there's a certain season approaching, you know, and, and it's conducive for bringing forth figs. It's, it it makes the uh, atmosphere uh, or it makes, uh, you know, just like we're going into spring. Where I live is kind of still wintry, but you're going into spring, so you know that you're going to start seeing grass growing, you know, you're going to start seeing leaves growing, you're going to start seeing people getting naked, you know, can't keep, can't, <laughs> they can't uh, keep the clothes on. And, mm-hmm. you know, you know that you're entering into a warm season. So Jesus said, just like you can tell, the changing of the season, when the stuff that I just said start happening, know that you're entering into a season for me coming back. I just thought about something that's this really nice. Um, think about it. Um, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, you remember mm-hmm. one, of, one of the stories in the Bible where it talks about Jesus went to the fig tree and he thought there was fruit on it and he wanted to eat. And Am mm-hmm. I telling this right, y'all? And then, and then the, the tree didn't have anything on it, so he, he cursed the fig tree and the tree died. Right. That's right. So what I'm trying to get, I'm feeling something about this. What am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say, so God is showing us that he is, in control, regardless of what season you may be in in your life, regardless of what might be happening to you, sometimes it looks like it's time, Mm -hmm. but wait on him. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Wait on him. Mm -hmm. Like when he cursed a fig tree and a tree died, that's because it looked like it was time. It looked like that fig tree was supposed to have fruit on it. Or, or what am I saying? The, the fig tree was supposed to, but it didn't. Am I correct, Brother Aaron? Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, so we have to just wait on, don't don't guess, don't think it's, you know, we, we can't say, well, it's tomorrow. I think w- what I'm trying to say here is we don't know when until he says now. Right. Yeah, we don't know when until he says now. He He says, behold the fig tree, yeah. And um, when you see the shoes, when you see it coming, then you know summer is at hand. So he's telling us 
that, that he, we could see the signs, but that doesn't give us the day. It, just because we're seeing the signs doesn't mean it's going to be April 27, 2011. Right. right. So I think here what, what, what it's trying to say is don't pay attention to the Mayans that say it's going to be 2012. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I need a scripture that says that if you won't. <laughs> Ex- yeah, exactly, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Okay. Um, what are, we're on um, 31, verse 31. Judy, did you do? Yeah, I did through 30. I did 20. Okay. Uh, yeah. Does anybody want to do 31, 32, and 33? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Um, 31, I'll back up to 30 just because it goes with it. Okay. Or 20, uh, 29. And he uh, spake unto them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now do forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when you see the things come to pass, you know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Uh, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Uh, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So we just explained the, uh, we just explained the the parable of the fig tree and how the Lord is is paralleling paralleling, uh, when you see those these things come and know that the kingdom of hand, the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, one of the things that uh, I, I I look at is this. Um, do you if you kind of see back in verse uh, twenty seven when it says the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory? Then he says when you see that stuff coming know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Mm-hmm. Um, why wouldn't he say again, know that I'll be coming, I'll be in the, uh, the Son of Man will be in the sky? How come he didn't say that again? You see, you see the question I'm trying to ask? How come he didn't, when he said in 27, how come he just didn't repeat it in 31? Because in 31 he said something. He said the kingdom of God is at hand. Mm-hmm. Now, here's here's my my answer for that. You know, I had to do a uh, I had to do a study of the kingdom of God. Now, kingdom is one word made up of two words, king and dominion. And dominion means the free will of the king. So, if you have a, mm. of the <laughs> king's dominion. Whatever the king says goes. Whatever the king's will is, is now in effect. So when he says in 31, so likewise ye, when ye see these things coming, know ye that the will of the king, God, is here. I don't know how that makes y'all feel, but that makes me feel really good because we've been looking at the will of the devil for years now. You know, mm-hmm. you can't turn on the radio. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm on. I'm sick of this stuff. You know, and, and here's one small example. You know, I'm I'm a real fan of, like, really re- researching stuff. And uh, some little girl, and I think I've mentioned her before, some that Rihanna girl, I feel uh-huh. sorry for her because I don't even think she knows what she's doing. <laughs> she uh, got this video, uh, something about umbrellas or something like that. But if you freeze frame one of her, one of the, uh, well, two of the scenes in that video, uh, one is she bends down and lifts her hands up. You know, I don't know if you can picture that. Her head is down by her knees. She, okay, she's on her knees. She bends her head down and she lifts her hands up. Now, a doctor looked at that and said, hey, that's physically impossible. Mm-hmm. You have your arms that high up and your, she said, because I'm looking at skeletal bones that you can only see from the back, I'm seeing frontal bones in this picture. So the doc, the, what I'm saying is that picture was altered to make a new picture. Now, her arms 
are really horns. Mm -hmm. Her hair makes a demon face. And that, and it blinks on the screen really fast. This is the stuff that they are pumping into children. So we're seeing mm -hmm. the devil, the de we're seeing the devil's little tricks and deceptions. Yeah, and it's just, you know, and he don't have any power. So what, so what, it, this is what he wants, he wants you to do. And I'm, I'm be done after this. This is what he wants you to do. He, you know how, it, Reverend Essie, I know you identify. If I played a certain R&B song, it'll take you straight back in your memory to when you first heard that song. It'll probably bring up a good time. It'll, you know, make you feel good when you hear this song. Oh, I remember exactly. it was the summer of 73. Ooh, that's the same thing they want you to do. They'll flash this thing in your face. So when you see it for real, you'll be like, ooh, wait a minute. I, I, wait a minute. I've I seen that before. I've seen that before. And you can't place it because it flashed so fast. And see, that's why Subliminal. we... Uh, yes. And that's why we, us parents need to be these, these gatekeepers to what your kids are listening to and what your kids are looking at. And they're going to hate it. But who cares? You know, God gave us these children to, to uh, guard them from stupid stuff like this. So when Jesus said, no... That the will of God is, I mean, in its totality, everywhere on the earth, God's will is in full effect. The devil's lease on the earth is up. God is, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. He's taking it back, and his will is, okay, okay, I'm, I'm going on. And, and, so, and while, I, while you're on that, I, I wanted to say, too, you can tell, you can tell, I, I don't know. Look, I, I'm, I'm just going to say what I have to say, and if somebody agrees, that's good. If you don't, let me know. Um, and, you know, we can talk about it, you know, but this is, I, in the entertainment field, not only in the entertainment field, you can see that, but I hate to say this, but it's entering the church. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with things on TV, but some, I'm not going to name names because it's getting to the point where I'm getting known for getting on preachers, but they're wrong, they're wrong. You know, if I was wrong, they'd tell me, you know, <laughs> but it's getting to the point where, you know, it's getting to the point where, um, some preachers who used to be um, high and lifted up as, I'm watching my words, high and lifted up as um, great this leaders right. Uh, right, of the Christian nation, uh, we used to be able to trust in them. Now it's getting to the point where they are beginning to show characteristics of belonging to these cults and these uh, satanic uh, cults and, and these people, who uh, Illuminati or whoever you're talking to, there, there's people that I would have given uh, all the money I could to go see them preach, just to feel the anointing of God to see these people preach. Mm -hmm. Now I'm seeing them, I mean, when you see preachers with earrings on and, 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 and pink go-go boots, you know, the the, men, the women are wearing pink go-go boots and the men are wearing earrings and they're talking about homosexuality is cool. No, homosexuality is an abomination unto God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God I don't, people can get mad at me all they want to. I don't care because I talk to a lot of homosexual people on YouTube and I'm going to be honest with you, some of them are really, really cool. You know, mm -hmm. and some of them are very ignorant. I'm talking about the ones that take my face and they make me talk and say and do things that I didn't do. These people are masters at manipulation. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and I try to tell these people, these homos, there's, some, there's some homosexuals on, on YouTube that are telling me that, you know, they were told God hates them. I said, no, God don't hate you. I said, mm -hmm. God hates our sins. He died for you. He loves you. But what's mm -hmm. happening is the preachers that the church used to be able to depend on is saying it's okay to be that way. For mm -hmm. I was born this way. No, right. no you wasn't born yeah. that way. Check your equipment and see what, yeah. you, know, what you are. Mm -hmm. exactly you know? Right. And, 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 and what, what gets me is you can't go to these preachers anymore because they're so into, and see, all of it is about money. God said you can't serve him, you can't serve God and mammon, man, money, whatever, at the same time. And they, they have they turned against us, folks, or some of them that just turned against us. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've heard it or not, but uh, mm, there's a preacher. If you want to know, call me. I don't think I want to say this because we're recorded, but there's a preacher who said, I'm going to tell you what he said. 
this preacher, he's a well-known preacher. He's one of the best ones in the nation. Okay, they're not best one, but I mean he's well-known in the nation. Mm-hmm. This man said, if he was left up to him, he would put cash machines in the church. So when you come in the church and people put their card in, he said the ones that paid their tithes. He said the machine would play beautiful heavenly music, and it would say, God bless you. Thank you. You be blessed. Have a seat, sit down, or whatever. He said, and then the people that come in and stick their card in the cash machine and didn't pay their tithes, he said he would have the machine go off and say, crook, 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 crook in the house, crook. And and then he said he would have the, he said he would take his deacons and he would give them AK, AK-47s and have them line up the crooks in the front of the church and shoot them dead. Mm-hmm. Okay? This is one of the preachers that we used to send money to, probably some of us on here have sent money to and trusted in him and believed in him. Now these preachers are selling out. They're selling their soul. They sold their soul to the devil. That's why everything that Jesus told us not to do That's why everything that Jesus told us is an abomination unto him. They're telling us it's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong, folks. Signs. Signs. Yes. That is the right. That's another reason you got to know the word for yourself. Right. Because the difference in, there's there's people who will rely on the pastor that you just said and, and other people to give them their word through the TV. So they right. won't have to study for themselves. And then you do that. I mean, my wife was just talking about a former church we used to go to, and the the pastor used to uh, say one verse and then talk for 30 minutes. He never brought up another scripture. He didn't have, when, he, when he went to another point, he didn't back it up with another scripture. That is dangerous. Yes, it is. That is totally dangerous because you can make somebody think stuff that's not there. Because you started off with one scripture, and you can lead people astray, and that is a dangerous position. Now, I went to a church recently. I'm not even going to say when, but I went to a church recently, and the pastor spoke for about 10 minutes and didn't even open up the Bible. And when he got done, he put the Bible underneath his arm and went and sat down. And I was sitting wow. there waiting to open up my own. Hey, I was like, wait a minute. He, cause he spoke for five minutes, and then he said, oh, well, I'm almost done. And I said, almost done? You only spoke for five minutes. I was waiting to crack open. He didn't even crack open the Bible. Wow, wow. You know, so we got to be, and you know what gets me? People will send their tithes faithfully to these people. You know, it's oh, yeah. all about entertainment. People enjoy being entertained. And they yeah. won't help out a little ministry like, like ours, New Birth Ministries. To be honest with you, to be so small and unknown, we do a lot. Mm-hmm. We, we've done a lot. We've had people in different countries except Jesus. You know, we have hmm. Bible studies online. You know, we give up our time, and, and, and we barely get help from anybody, but our help is in the Lord. If it wasn't for God, I don't know what we would do. But the people, hmm. people are sending thousands and thousands, you know, to these preachers with the pink go-go boots and the earrings. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't get it, <laughs> you know. Hmm. Amen. What verse is we on, 34? Yeah. Did we do 33? Yeah, I read that one. I didn't expound on it. But um, okay. that, was just, that, that verse is saying to me that heaven and earth will pass away. Well, that's what it says. But my words shall, shall not pass away. Now, you know, in the Bible says that, you know, uh, he, heaven and earth is going to pass away. It's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And Jesus said all that can is it, going to pass away. But the things I'm saying to you, Will always live on. It's gonna it's gonna ring true at any given point in time. Amen. Amen. And uh, thirty four. You want me to start with thirty four? Yeah. I'll do thirty four down. For sake of time, I'll do thirty four down. And and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. Oh, my goodness, and drunkenness and cares of this life. That's what, see, your prayer. Remember I was telling you about your prayer. And mm-hmm. cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. For mm-hmm. as, a, as a snare, I'll do one by one. 34 is saying, in other words, resist temptation 
Um, then don't live worldliness. Don't be worldly. We don't have time. Look, folks, you can play around with, you can, you can think you're playing around with God all you want to, but God's going to win and you're going to lose and you're going to find yourself with a very deep tan and no lotion. <laughs> Amen. So we need to quit thinking about being worldly, keeping up with the Joneses. You know, I want this and I want that and I want to be like, I want my blessings while I'm living. That's what everybody says. Yeah. You know, you want to be blessed while you're living, but if Jesus didn't give it to me, I don't want it. Yeah. It's worldly. Man. I don't. I'm not selling you. I'm not selling my soul to, to have things. Okay, and mm-hmm. then the drunkenness and cares of this life, cares of this life, and so that um, they come upon you unaware. We are supposed to know when night falls upon us, and we are also supposed to know when day comes. I don't know about anybody else, but the birds wake me up every morning at seven ten, unless I mm-hmm. get up earlier. I mm-hmm. look forward to God's birds singing to me. I look forward to the sun coming through the window. I mm-hmm. am aware of things at all times. If you're drunk and Jesus comes back, what happens the next day? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? Okay, verse 35, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth as a snare. See, it's going to come on to you, as a, and it warns us about drunkenness again there, and, and, and excess. In, in other words, what was that I read? It's surfeiting. No, before the word surfeiting, what was that? And taking it into yourselves any time your hearts be overcharged. Overcharged mm-hmm. means too much of something. Mm-hmm. Not too much, not too much, don't be drunken with much wine. Ain't that what the Bible says? Mm-hmm. Don't be drunk. If you mm-hmm. look at that, you look at it up. Look it up in uh, in your Thompsons or chain reference or whatever you have or your concordance, and it says much wine. Do not be drunk with much wine. God is warning us about everybody wanting to be. What's, what's the word they use? Party goers and stuff. There's a word they use for it. Uh, they always want to party. Rev, yeah, rev, rebel. Yeah, yeah don't, rebel. Yeah, don't be a reveler. Yeah, because I tell you what, everybody says, well, I got so stoned last night. I was so high. I woke up this morning, and I said, hmm, I'm going back to sleep. There ain't nothing going. Yeah, and you know what? Jesus could have came and left, and you lay in there sleeping and snoring. Mm-hmm. You know, look for the Lord. If you don't look for him, he's not going to look for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, as a snare, he's going to come back as a snare. It's going to catch you off guard. Verse 36 says, watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these, escape all these things, escape, okay, all these mm-hmm. things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. The Son mm-hmm. of Man is Jesus. It's telling you to always pray. In other words, don't fall for temptations. Stay, always be watchful. Always watch mm-hmm. for Jesus. If somebody comes up to you and says, hey, let's go out and, and have a, let's go out and, you know, and, and get a little tipsy tonight and dance and enjoy ourselves. Cause, oh, you know, you need to rest. You need to rest and take out some time for yourself. You know, you go out and party, and what if Jesus comes back? Mm-hmm. Because you think you, need, you deserve some time to yourself. Keep your eyes. And notice it says always pray. Listen, if you pray always, you will not have time to fall for temptation. Right, right. That goes for the, 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 the girls that think that the man got pretty eyes and he's tall and handsome and the guys that are looking for a good wife and, and they can't, you know, look for Jesus. Look for Jesus. And, and he'll mm-hmm. take care of all that for you later. <laughs> you won't need that once you go with him. Right. <laughs> in verse 37, and in the day time, he was teaching it. This is what I like, 37, 38. Notice it says Jesus was teaching in the temple in the daytime, and at mm-hmm. night he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives, and all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple to hear him. It goes to show Jesus taught in the day while it is yet day. Jesus taught in the day, and then he went at night to recharge and rest. So, mm-hmm. you know, God wants you at night to recharge and rest, but Always be prepared for morning. Be mm-hmm. prepared for day. Mm-hmm. Right. Jesus right. rested in the anointing so that he could teach by day. That means mm-hmm. he powered up. So instead of dancing on the dance floor and wearing the shortest skirt you can or the lowest shirt you can, Okay, you get the time you're dancing on that dance floor, you should be powering up. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Amen. You should be, it's not corny to look for Jesus. Right, 
Exactly. Is there any questions? Anybody have any questions or anything? Well, one la one last thing, uh, Reverend Nancy. I was just thinking while you were talking, um, uh, the word distraction came into my came to my mind when you were talking about in uh, uh, serv serviting and drunkenness and the cares mm -hmm. of life. Distraction. Uh, there's a lightweight distraction, you know, that's called TV, you know, Dances with the Stars and exactly. Celebrity Apprentice. And I... I, I, I Charlie Sheen. Yes. I mean, stupid stuff like that. People are paying so much to the royal wedding. I mean, why? I don't even care that this boy is getting married. God bless him, but come on. And exactly. I bet you, I bet you, yeah. I bet you Jesus will come back during the finale of Dancing with the Star. <laughs> you, know, you, yeah, see, you know, you know what they're doing? They're lullabying us. Yes, that is the that's dumbing. That's exactly people. Uh, yep. Yeah, people are lullabied. They're being lullabied. And that's why you keep watching the same news over and over. And uh, Did you ever notice what the news is? It's always houses that burned down or cars that wrecked on Interstate 79. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or down here it's uh, kids being attacked by their teachers. See? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're like, okay. We did too. <laughs> you, know, you know? Yeah. <laughs> distraction. Everybody, you know what? I believe mm -hmm. that's the word God has given us tonight. Beware of distractions. If mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the smallest, minute distraction can keep you from being with Jesus, can, if you, you can miss him. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody on here that wants to accept Jesus as their Savior? Yeah, I just I, I like to throw that out um, because uh, I, I'm the kind of person I believe the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. And if I could take something, you know what I'm saying? If I could take somebody to heaven with me, oh yeah, get your backpack, we're gone. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, you know. So I hope I just pray that everybody on here has Jesus as their Savior. You don't have to do it publicly. You don't have to say it's me, Lori Sampson from 3255, you know, Mockingbird Lane. You don't have to do that. Just accept Jesus as your Savior. Ask him to forgive you of all of your sins, amen, and then start anew, go to church, and start reading the Bible, and start talking to the Lord. I thank everybody for coming on tonight. Is there any questions or anything anybody has? Um, I found, a, a, well, kind of a little poem type thing called Watching Clouds. That, okay, that's good. That's what we that's were good. talking about tonight. Okay. And it's called Watching Clouds. Whenever I see clouds forming pictures in the sky, I wonder if God is experimenting seeing what new works he would like to invent and trying out different shapes and sizes. I wonder if this is how our world began. Perhaps God practiced first with clouds, perfecting and polishing his ideas until he was ready to begin the creation. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that sounds definitely like a child of God, <laughs> like a little girl, a little, God's little girl. <laughs> oh, that is in my poetry book from when I was a little girl, so... <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Amen. So keep our eyes on that glory cloud. There's going to be a difference. It's going to be bigger than that little rainbow we've been seeing. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for the Bible study that we had tonight. Thank you for your word. You're telling us to watch out for distractions and keep our eyes on Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for using us today. And Lord God, cause us to always come together and know that when we're together, we're going to hear from you. I, I ask you to bless everybody that was on this Bible study tonight. There's a few that left, Lord God, bless them, their households, their children, their family, their jobs, their finances. And Lord, I just ask right now that you just stay, stay with us. And forgive us of any sins that we may have committed that would separate us from you, Lord God, because it is you we need. It's not nothing. It's not things. It's you that we need. Lord, we want to see more of you. Show us more of your face, Lord God. We get your hands. We get your blessings, Lord God, but we want your face to shine through ours. We want people to say that you, they know that we've been with you. When they look upon us, we want people to see that we spent time with you. We want people to come to us and say, what shall I do to be saved? How can I be like you? How can I serve the Lord and have him love me too? Lord God, put love into our hearts. Burn out all the dross, Lord God. And Jesus, thank you for dying on a cross for us. This is the time of the year when we celebrate Resurrection Sunday soon. And we thank you for the holy, matchless, 
blood and name of Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, God's Son. Cover everybody in this Bible study with your blood. Give us peace and security, protection, Lord God, and most of all, you, in your holy name. Amen. 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 God bless everybody. Go in peace. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you hopefully back next Wednesday. Amen. Good night. Amen. Good night.